around in the bubble, George Floyd happened. That's right. We stopped playing. We go, oh, we're gonna, we gonna ask the owners for it. We're gonna ask the owners for it. Stop asking them for <laughs> What are we asking them for? I went down the line, no bullshit. And you, you can show, you can show, you can ask these dudes if not. I got Paul George sitting right here. I got DeMar DeRozan sitting right here. I got Russell Westbrook sitting right here. I'm literally sitting next to all of these dudes who are LA guys. I'm like, bro, I'm not counting your chips, but everybody else is. So you make 200, you make 200, you make 175, you make 150, you make 180. Why don't y'all have your own gym? Why we gotta go to, why we gotta go to UCLA to work out in LA every time? You got your own, you got, y'all all come from the exact same community. You want, you, you want to inspire kids that look like you. All it takes is five of them. All it takes is five of them. All it takes is five of them. Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is indeed your brother, Big VJ, checking in. Today's conversation, we're going to talk about David and Goliath, right? We want to have a conversation about that. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> that we are going to discuss it in a way that you never heard it before. I'm almost certain of that, right? In this conversation, we're going to talk about the brain, the mental. We're going to talk about the black mind because, beloved, we know, we do not think, we know that all is mind and the universe is mental, right? Um, Our brother, J.R. Smith, former NBA player was having a conversation with some athletes and then this conversation um, he was saying that you know because something very tragic happened in the village and a bunch of NBA players they was all in a huddle and they were talking and they were saying you know what should we ask the NBA owners for right what should we ask the NBA bosses for four right they were saying ultimately what should we ask massa for and then our brother jr smith said he responded by saying we don't have to ask massa for anything we got fame we got celebrity we got notoriety we got money we can do whatever we want to do by ourselves. We already got a fan base. But what our brother J.R. Smith did not know is that, see, it's deeper than that. Because, see, Goliath don't have no head. Goliath has been decapitated and his head is in the hand of David. So let's talk about it, right? Let's figure it out <laughs> because this conversation, we're going to almost piggyback after what we talked about in our last conversation in which we were saying, you know, beloved, whether you know it or not, your image, our image, is connected to sacred Semitic texts, in which there's a hidden story. It's a hidden message, which is given to them as Semitics on how to treat us. But it's all hidden in the racial allegory. It, it's all there, right? I had a brother respond and comment on that conversation. And he said, 
you know, Israel is really black people. That's what our brother said. And I wasn't shocked at it. I mean, I figured it was only a, a matter of time before somebody from our camp in our village say that because there's a segment of our people on the corner of every inner city in the hills of North America in the territory that we call the United States and they are saying they are the real Israelites they're the real Semitics they're the real Hymies the ones that sit in the seat of power they're the fake ones right and to that I can only and I mean only say this right that's a surface level reader beloved if you hear any man saying that the real Israelites and Semitics are black people when we know it's only allegory they're just surface level readers and there's really nothing you can do to help them but let's just say it this way right let's say it this way if you really think your genealogy comes from a man named Noah that lived to be 500 years old before he had his sons of Shem, Ham, and Japheth I don't really know what to tell you if you think Shem you know because that's where the Semitics come from Shem and Semitics that's one and the same right that, that word is interchangeably used Shem was a hundred years old before he begot Arphikshah and then Arphikshah lived to be 530 years before he did blah 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 okay if you really think that uh, <laughs> a man lived to be a hundred years old before he started having children and you come from that man I, I don't know what to tell you see what we could do on this podcast is say well nor was 500 years and the 500 is a representation of this this and so uh sham was 100 years old but that 100 number is a representation of thus thus and so but you won't get it because you surface level you you want to really walk around and think that men and women live to be that old underneath the same sun stars and moons that you got the same water and you know fire and wind that you got and they just live this you know methuselah was 900 and something but you don't if we say well the number means that see we'd be over your head so we don't even do that part but it's just interesting how you you think the snake really was talking matter of fact i do you one better you think the planet had a garden of eden on it you think you think it was a real place on the planet that was a garden of eden and the snake can talk but dig this here's, here's what you just because this is the part of the allegory that you miss don't you know when adam and eve was disobedient they were put out of the garden right all right so just let's, let's use our brains they were put out of the garden and then what how come they didn't go back to the garden the garden of eden that we're talking about because some of you guys think this is real literal you know why they couldn't go back because it was like an angel sitting at the entrance of it with like a sword like a cherubim or something they call it i can't remember exactly but it was like an angel at the front of it with like a sword preventing them from coming back did you read that part of the story too okay so now you got to use your own brain to ask yourself this well why wasn't the angel with the sword there to stop the serpent from getting in if that's the case why was the why is the angel so important after they be disobedient and then they they put out you would think that the adam and eve characters would have been protected by the angel with the sword so the serpent can't even come in and trick them in the first place but see you're just literal thinkers you, you're missing the whole allegory part <laughs> so then when we come with this podcast and we take it a step further and we go to the racial allegory you're really confused now because you want to I guess you're thinking if you put the black paint job on it, it's going to make the story better or it's going to make it realer or something. I don't know. But beloved, maybe all that 
is a different story for a different day. What we're going to talk about today is going to really go over your head when we start talking about David and Goliath because we're going to show to you that this is a tutorial for them. We're talking about semantics. This is their blueprint that the Jaime's used to go in business with you because their deity put it in place. It's a phrase that we often use by saying, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. So if we look at a body of people or an ethnicity and they're going to be in business with other people, but they're going to always be the head. What does that make you? What does that make anybody if they're the head? They mean you don't need your head. That's the symbolism of Goliath. See, the small hat got your David got your head. He got the most mightiest amongst you because that is the representation of Goliath. See, when you look at that story on the surface level, you I don't know. Some of you guys, I'm not sure. You may really think there's a Philistine giant. And he's a big old guy, warrior, strong, mighty. And the little shepherd boy came out and really threw the slingshot, hit him in the head with the rock for real. You know what I'm saying? Got the sword and cut his head off. And you probably think that happened. That's real. But it's an allegory to that. The allegory is, see, Goliath represents a big problem. It's a big issue. And with the right faith, you know what I'm saying? You can overcome a big giant in your life, a big obstacle in your life. You know, poor chop is pretty skilled in training to do that. Because we got to give credit where credit is due. Poor chop can... He's good at breaking down the allegory to you guys. He can give a good inspirational message. He can talk about, he, he can do that. But what poor chop is not going to go is to the next level where the allegory is ratio. And we're going to go to the next step to show where that's a racial allegory, beloved, because Goliath is not only a big obstacle. See, he was, he was, uh, he was an original man. He was black. He was a children of ham. He came out that, that line. He's a, he's the black giant. He's the black warrior. He's the mighty black warrior that's skilled and agile. But in his confrontation, in his meeting, in his relationship with David, the Semitic, his head was cut off in the process and David had his head. Now, let's fast forward and come out of that tutorial to black entertainers and millionaires and billionaires today. Who is their head, beloved? Because I'm going to show you how the racial allegory fits in the real world. Who's Oprah's head? Do Oprah run the show? Who's Bob Johnson's head? Who's um, Michael Jordan's head? So, beloved, we want you to take that walk with us because we're going to go deeper into the racial allegory. Where... Nobody really wants to go. So just think to yourself, because I don't want you to think we're just making it up. Think about every single black person that you know in business, in entertainment, even in the streets, right? Who's playing tough guy? And you know what you always find out to be true? They just Goliath. It's the semantics, man, that's really running the show. It's the Hymies. They the one who got the... They're David. They got Goliath head in their hands. I came up back in the day, beloved, we thought that um, NWA, beloved, we thought they was just... They was just running the streets. But you know, they belong to a small hand. It was a small hat that was David that was really running the show. Jerry Heller is running the show. We thought Suge Knight was one of the baddest CEOs we ever seen before. He was just Goliath. He belonged to Jimmy Yavin. Dr. Dre belonged to Jimmy Yavin. Jimmy Yavin is David. Dr. Dre and Snoop and Suge was just Goliath. They didn't have no head. The small hat was their head. Even down in the deep south, Little J always looked it strong to us, right? That's what we call him, Little J, James Prince. J Prince, as they say today. Strong guy, rap a lot of records. 
But when he sat next to those folks at EMI, we just seen who like, uh, you can see what a <laughs> well, level we can see where the real power where it was at. It was in the hands of David because David had their heads. See, they write the checks. They cut the checks. You just get the checks. You just the body. Think about it, because I don't want you to think we're making it up. What we are submitting to you is this tutorial is taught to them in sacred Semitic texts that we often read all the time. We just don't get to that. We don't get that to that. We don't get to that level. We get everywhere else. We get to the shouting level. We get to the falling out level. Right? We got, you know. <laughs> now we at we at the um they stole our identity level now because I'm, I don't know. Sometimes we, we're the real black Jews. And I'm like, it, it looks cool until we see the Semitic Jews put you out the land of Israel. Send you elsewhere. Then we say, ah, oh, we can see who's really the Goliath and then who's, um, who's really the David. I came here for a visit in 1995. I really enjoyed uh, the love, um, the, the spirit of oneness that was here in our community in Israel. Um, coming from America, I just knew that this was the place that I wanted to have, ch raise my, have children and raise my children. In 1998, Tovit picked up her entire life in America and moved to Demona, a small town in southern Israel. Now, she's lived here for over two decades, has had all of her eight children here, but soon they may all be forced to leave. April, I received a letter of deportation with my name on it, as well as all of my children's names. Um, at that time, we had, we were given 60 days. Um, and we were told we would be deported from the land of Israel. Tovit. We thought Kanye was the boss, right? Kanye said some comments, what happened? His head came out and what happened? You see how that thing gets twisted when he started saying certain things about a certain group? See, it changed, it changed overnight. Now, who came out in Kanye's aid? Nobody. Because they don't have no head. They're just about it. They're Goliath. David got their head. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to show you who got the head over here. Who... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Who's the head and not the tail? Let me say it that way. Who Who is the head and not the tail? Are you the head? Do you control your water source that come into your home? Who's the head? <laughs> Do you control your power that come into your home? Or, or somebody else is the head of that? Who controls your financing? Do Are you in control of your financing or somebody is in control of that? See, somebody's the head. Somebody's else is the body when we start talking about the nba beloved let's just say this right because we're going to talk about what our brother jr smith said we're going to pick it back on that and you know those boys in the nba been getting money for a long time right um our brother Jawan howard from chicago who was part of the fab five in michigan in 1996 he was the first nba athlete to get a hundred million dollar contract right hundred million dollar contract and um recently in the paper our brother Jalen brown is there because he just signed uh the nba's first 300 million dollar contract right so that can only leave the imagination to say all right i wonder who's gonna get the first 400 million dollar contract or the first 500 million dollar contract whoever's gonna get it we know they're going to be an original man that we do know we also know that whoever get that contract is going to be a goliath a black man with no head because david is going to have the head of the mighty black man because it was written 
J.R. Smith was saying, beloved, um, he was kind of highlighting California. And J.R. was saying, you know, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and James Harden, all of them guys are from California. You know what I'm saying? And um, they don't need nobody to help make no changes. They can make all the changes that they want themselves. You can do a, a quick Google research and you'll see that Harden is worth $165 million, right? Leonard is worth $80 million. Then you got George is worth $110 million. Now, okay, so we just do the math on our feet, right? Quick on our feet. That's like $355 million, something like that. $355, $360 in that ballpark, if not more. Because those guys are still currently playing. They still got big contracts. They're still making money, right? All right. It is public record, beloved, that between Harden and George alone, in the last five years, they both made 15 investments. And the companies that they all invested in was non-black companies. None of the companies were black and brown. Do you know why? Because they're just the body. The Jaime got their head. Now, if you and I were leading their careers, what would we tell them to do? If we were the, if we was the head, you know what I'm saying, over three brothers, because we didn't even include, you know what I'm saying, uh, Kawhi's investments. If we was over these three blood, these three brothers, and they worth a combined net worth of three hundred and fifty-five million dollars, we'd make sure that they own real estate everywhere. We'd make sure they invest in black culture, black life, which is real estate. People got to have somewhere to stay. We're going to build apartment units all over the country texas georgia bama mississippi and our brothers is going to get rich by owning all of la and all of the south because just think these guys have been making this hundreds of men since 96 they've been getting paid big boy money since juan howard take detroit for an example I man you know i think it's 53 folks that that's on the roster of like a, a football team but all of them is not original people. We know that. But the majority of men, like 85% of men. And then you get 10 to 12 players on the NBA roster. Those are hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars that flow through just the athletes of Detroit every single year. But the cities are poor. They don't have nothing. There's not a stronghold where you would think these athletes will own every single thing. But they don't. They don't really own nothing for real. Do you know why? Because somebody else is their head. Somebody else is the head and got their head. The Jaime got their head. Their financial advisors don't let them do that. Their financial money guys, their money, their handlers is not allowed to do that. But it's not even thought of them to doing that because they're just the body. That's all they are. They All they're ever going to be is a Goliath. But the shepherd boy, the, the Jaime, the hook nose. <laughs> he got the head and we celebrate these stories because we don't know the deeper meaning of these stories because we can't get past the first level that's where we at beloved they're the head and not the tail listen listen to the phrase they are the head and not the tail. All right, so let's imagine this, right? Let's imagine this. Let's imagine they finish out the NBA season. We talking about the Clipper player of uh, Kawhi, George, and Harden, right? Let's just say because just look at Paul George. We're looking at a small forward for the Clippers. He's a six-time NBA All Star. You don't think he got the fame and notoriety where he can kind of start his own league? Cause I said this before, I'm like, bro, he can, I mean, all of these cities that we live in, all of them have some kind of convention center or some civic center or something like that. Where they can just, you can book the places out, rent them, throw your own game in your own league and make a ton of money. It's easy to do that. You know who own these convention centers and all this kind of stuff in these cities? You do, cause it's publicly owned, it's yours. And if your city don't have one, it doesn't really make a difference. You can vote one in. 
because that's what politics is the science of governing people that's what all the money is trapped all the money is trapped into the politics so you voted in all you're going to need is what just get you an architecture um an architect part of me which is easy because you can go down to tuskegee that teaches architecture or florida a m or prairie view one of these hbcus and get a great black mind whether she's a a woman or a powerful brother on the rise and you can just give them a game because see this country is a republic this is what they teach us right so being that this country is a republic the word of the day is democracy do you know what democracy means demos that means the people that this is greek right this is greek demos means the people so they mean crassy or critia means the power democracy is supposed to mean when the people got the power the demos the people got the power you know we living in we living in a demon crassy though not a demos a demon crassy you know what that means that's when the devil got the power so when you hear the devil say he's going to bring democracy to South America or to Central America or to Africa, he's saying he's going to be the head of everything, not you. And Chicago is proving that. Brandy don't run nothing. He getting the call from Capitol Hill about what to do in demon crassy. We're going to leave it there, beloved. Just I ain't gonna hold you long, man. <laughs> I just knew that. Oh man, the real Jews is black, brother. <laughs> oh man, the real Israel from Iraq. You know, okay, if if, if all y'all, you know, all y'all this y'all really because you know Abraham, this is the part they leave out that whole little story, but it's all allegory, but it's cool. I can play along sometimes. You know, Abram. That was his real name, Abram. You know, his mother's line and his father's line all come from Iraq. So don't you think it'd be dope to go back to your Semitic roots <laughs> in Mesopotamia, in the land of Ur, where your father, Abram, is from Iraq and connect with the land and the people and go back home? Because Israel is not your home. The place that in the Levant, that's not your home. That's the place they invaded. You know what I'm saying? That's a, <laughs> that's the black land over there. Get that land back and go back to your father's and your mother's homeland and home genealogy, wherever it all come from, the roots. It doesn't happen. I mean, we know it's really just allegory, but, you know, it's just what it is. Your proximity to them, it's a different part of the story. It ain't about no genealogy. They're the head. You're the tail. You're just in front. The NBA players, they're just in front. You know who's in the back running the show? The Hymies. That's how your relationship works. I like Ice Cube. And every time you look at the big three games, and I watch the big three games because I want Cube to be successful, I always see our people there. Our people on the court, on the sidelines. Referring, you see Cube on the sideline. You know who you do not see? Jeff. The Jaime's always in the back. And when that normally happens in black entertainment businesses, right? They end up taking it over. No pun intended, because I could have used that for BET, but the Jaime's run that too. Dig that. The Jaime's run black entertainment television <laughs> do you know why because you're a goliath they're the head not you and that's the representation of goliath big strong black mighty with no head defeated by the semitic the small hat decapitated him and got his head even back in the plantation days, that's how they used to do us physically. They didn't bring the weakest out in the front and embarrass them and beat them and torment them. And they've got the strongest one. 
They pulled out the mighty, they pulled out Goliath. And once they demonstrated their power over the physically strong Goliath, all the other slaves, they fell in line. See, that's why LeBron James is a new Goliath. He's worth a billion dollars, beloved, and they got him out there playing. Come on, man. That's not cool. They got that man out there playing, running up and down the court at, what, over a billion dollars? He got no, and I love this brother now. This is a platform we love LeBron. We know he loves the game of basketball. You know why he won't go out on his own and start his own league with the biggest name in the planet now? You know why he won't go out on his own and start his own league and do his own thing? Because he don't have no head. The Jaime got the head. He wouldn't begin to know what to do to figure out to start their own. Beloved, it's designed to be that way. Don't you see it's designed to be that way? Man, I'm going to leave it there. Because that's our brother LeBron. But man, worth a billion dollars running up and down the court? And then they telling you like it's a flex. Oh, it's a flex? You're going to be out there with your sons. I'm like, what? <laughs> on, the, on the court that Jenny busting and running out. You, it's a flex for you to be out there. <laughs> yeah, man. It, the, the head is gone. Hmm? The head is gone. The head is gone. Peace and black power to your family. We thank you guys so much for listening, beloved. Thank you guys for hanging out. This is indeed Real Black Contents Form Podcast. This is your brother V, man. I'm going to get it with you guys later. Peace. Thanks for being here. I'm going to be a financial advisor. So I met with a, with a whole bunch of guys. And uh, you know, a lot of guys were coming in. And I can remember old timers saying, if it's too good to be true, don't do it. So a lot of guys came in, yeah, uh, they say you're gonna get 40 million on your first contract. You give me the 40 million, I can turn it into 200 million. By the time you're 23, I was like, I don't like this guy. Another guy said the same thing. And then I met one little small, beautiful Jewish man who says, I'm in the savings bonds. You know, we're gonna put your money and you know, we're gonna start a sub chapter S corporation from your family. So, you know, all the stuff that you're doing, you can write it off. I was like, you know what? Shalom. Barak Hashem. I'm going with you, sir. This is a sick Negro.